Today, Kenneth Copeland and his special guest, Jesse Duplantis, share the power and authority you have in Christ as you make a stand on the Word of God. You have authority by the blood of Jesus. Next, on the Believer's Voice of Victory. Welcome, everybody, to the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. I'm Kenneth Copeland. Let's have a word of prayer. We'll get right into God's lesson today. Father, we thank you for the Word. Your Word is the authority yes, of this universe, and it is our authority, and we put it first in our lives, and we thank you for it, sir. Yes, we Lord. open our hearts and minds to you today for revelation of it, and we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Brother Jesse, welcome, my thank good you, man. Sir. I appreciate thank that. Thank you, sir. We've, thank you. we've seen some interesting things this yes. week. That's and, um, you know, Jesse... God has never, ever told anybody to do anything that was possible. That is correct. That is so true. He always goes beyond our mind and oh, our senses. Oh, yeah. So it takes his anointing yes. to do anything he's ever told anybody <laughs> yes, to do. Indeed. So whatever he's told you to do, he, he, don't argue with him. Quit arguing with yes, God. Sir. Man, that's the worst thing you can You're do. You're not going to win. No, no. <laughs> and besides that that's, that, that's where all the good stuff is, is yes, what he's sir. trying to get you to step out there and get into. Um, the fact that he tells you to do something yes. authorizes you to do it. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. That gives you the authority to do it. With the authority comes the empowerment. Yes, indeed. Amen. That's true. Now, when Jesus said, let us go to the other side, there was enough authority and power right. for them to have no fear. That's correct. For them to believe we're going to the other side. Yeah. So he went out there and went to sleep. He expected them to take him to take him to the other side. That's right. And they come back and woke him up and said, we're about to die here. <laughs> so now he would have been unjust if in, in saying to them, where is your faith? Why is it you're afraid? Yeah. Now he would have been unjust in asking that question and expecting them to do something about that storm right. without waking him up if they didn't have the authority or the power, authority and the power right. to do it. Right. And he's certainly not unjust. No, he's indeed. righteous and he's just yes, in indeed. doing so. Now, how much more joy would it have been for them? I mean, they got, they got their, they just got goggle-eyed at him. What kind of a man is this? When they, if they'd have found out they're the same kind of man. Same if they just stood up, of... Peter, if Peter stood up in that boat, and said, Jesus said, go to the other side and I'm going for you to walk. Pray, right. you know, and just that storm to have stopped for him the same as it did That's Jesus right. because it was the same power. Jesus said, I do nothing of myself. It is the Father that dwelleth within me. He does the works. You know, I really believe Jesus knew the storm was coming, but that didn't make no difference to Jesus. He told him to go to the other side. You know, that, no, there's something interesting about that, too. That being the case, uh, why didn't he tell them? Yeah. Well, he figured they should handle it. No. What is it? He didn't hear his father say it. Ah, I like that. So That's he good. didn't say it either. He didn't say it either. He just no. said what his father said. He said what the father said. So it doesn't really make no difference if there's, if there's storms in life. So no. what? Just go to the other side. Yeah. Knock them out of the way. <laughs> and you know, that's what we're doing today. That's what he expects us to be doing. If Jesus tarries, we're going to the other side. Yes, sir. It's the same thing. Absolutely. Glory to God. You know, I, I was talking to your staff before we came on television. I said, and I told them, I said, you know why Jesus told us to walk by faith? Because Satan can't. You see, no, he can't do that. <laughs> he can't. He, no, he's not a faith no, devil. No, he's a flesh no, devil. No. He can't go where mm -hmm. you go. He can't no, no. do that. No. See? And so if you walk by faith and not by sight, now you're walking by sight, he can go where you go. But if you walk by faith, he can't do that. Jesse, he is completely, totally consumed. He is absolutely, 
absolutely um, filled, consumed, overflowed with fear. Yeah. Yeah. He has no other thing. That's all he's He got. lost his anointing when he fell. Yeah. He has nothing but the force of fear. And so when you resist him, he flees. He, yeah. he can't help it. See, there's a force in him that even if he tried to stand and you speak in the name of Jesus, the force coming out of you is so strong, the yes. force inside him Amen. just sucks him out the way. <laughs> he, he, can, he can't help it. He can't, it, it he's got to he go. He can make a decision to stand up against you and it doesn't work because he doesn't have the power to make that decision work. <laughs> You know, I think one of the greatest... The Whoa! Dumb, yeah, that's good. That's good for you. One of the dumbest <laughs> things anybody can ever do in life is deceive themselves. Satan is the perfect definition of deceiving himself. Yeah. yeah. Totally, completely deceived himself. I mean, what, I mean, I can understand somebody trying to deceive... All. Yeah, I can understand somebody trying to deceive someone else. But to deceive your own self, you got... that. that that's, that's insanity. I mean, if you think about it, and he is totally deceived through his own fear. When you realize, ladies and gentlemen, just how afraid Satan is of you instead of you being afraid of him, that's what you're saying here, mm -hmm. that power and authority. When Jesus said this, to believe the unbelievable, to receive the impossible, you said it early in one of the programs, everything God ever told us to do is, is impossible. But that's the way it's supposed to be. You know, that devil said to Jesus, we know who you are, mm -hmm. son of God. Have you come to torment us? Yeah. You know, I walked into a... a <laughs> <laughs> I was in uh, Jamaica, and uh, I was preaching up in the mountains, up in in some really really back uh, places. That and some, some I was the first light skinned man some of those people have ever ever mm -hmm. seen. And uh, <laughs> my, the pastor picked me up to take me to the service that night. And he wanted to stop off and pray for somebody, and I, I agreed. We got out of the car, started up toward the house. He said, uh, Brother Copeland, <laughs> she's mad. <laughs> I said, what? <coughs> he said, she's mad. She's she crazy. <laughs> and come to find out, she's completely, totally um, demon-possessed. Yeah. She'd been squatted in a bed for 18 years. My God. Anyway, walked in there. And when and I walked in, I had, he was on one side, another man on the other side of it walked in there. And uh, <laughs> she turned to his, she wasn't looking at me. She turned her head over to this other, uh, and, and said, uh, you must be Brother Weber. And uh, he said, no, oh, ma'am, I'm not. <laughs> she looked at the other, passed me by and looked at the other and said, you must be Oral Roberts. He said, no, 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 no ma'am. She turned around and she I know who you are and you're afraid of anything that isn't flesh and blood. I said, shut your mouth and call of her in the name of Jesus. Praise then God. I mean, this thing fell in that bed and... It was amazing. See, that demon knew who I was. Yes, indeed. But he's building a bluff. <laughs> right. See, he's trying to con me around here a little yeah. bit. He's just got and, a facade. And, and I, I, I didn't have any fear <laughs> of it. And there was a time when I did, but God yeah. had taught me sure. better than that, see. Yes, indeed. And uh, it was just an amazing thing, Jesse. And the word of the Lord had come to me already and told me what to say to her. Yeah. I just told her, I said, now, baby, I love you. And Jesus loves you so Amen. much. And she just wilted, wilted and just melted and just fell over. And, 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 and God just healed her and delivered her right there of that horrible thing. It kind of reminded me of the scripture that Jesus saw that lady with that infirmity for 18 years. Was it 18 years? Yeah. Same thing. He said, yeah, same thing. And he said this, ought not this woman be loosed? You know, that has struck me for many, many years. And when I see people in bondage, and it comes to me, ought not they be loosed? I said, well, yeah. He said, well, then loose them. Yeah, amen. You know, I know. 
It's our responsibility. And that devil was, see, that devil was afraid. Yes. He, he was afraid. And he's trying to build a case against me. He's trying to get me to, to, to back off right. because he knew if I said it, he'd had it. Yeah. He saw the power in you. He, it's amazing how a devil can acknowledge the power of God in you and a Christian won't. <laughs> Does that well, make any sense? I mean, I've seen some people, they see the power of God and they go, well, well I know I see it, but I don't believe it. That demon's not, he's, he's not looking on your flesh. Right. And uh, there was, you remember Brother Savell telling us about the time he was in that witch doctor's hut? Yes, indeed. And yeah. the witch doctor's talking to him about the spirits and Jerry, Jerry was asking him different questions mm -hmm. about them. And, uh, he, Jerry asked him, he said, well, are those, that the devil that uh, does these things with you and so is, are they here now? He said, oh no, they left when you came in. He <laughs> said, they, they know you got the Holy Spirit. And that's something. That's and a blessing of God. And he said, they're, they're not the Holy Spirit. You have the Holy Spirit. And Brother Savell, all he did was accept what God had already had given. Oh yeah. And you did the same thing. And you know, it reminds me of something that happened. John Hagee and Diana Hagee came to New Orleans just about two years ago. And he said, Jesse, he wanted to go to eat at a certain place. I said, I'll take you out there. Let me be a blessing to you. So he's going to stay at the, he was staying at the Omni Hotel right there in the French Quarter. God is my witness. So we're standing there, me and John Hagee. All right. And all of a sudden this lady, this person comes up to Brother Hagee and says, why are you in this town? I know why you're here. John looks at me and says, I think we got a devil on this side. Yeah. And I mean, that devil knew John. Uh -huh. Now, he had never seen that person before in his life. I never had. Checking into a hotel, and Satan getting nervous because he's so full oh, of fear. Oh, man. He sees the power of God in people's lives. I got to go to this scripture <laughs> that we've been talking about here. <laughs> And we've been yes, dealing sir. with that. Believe the unbelievable and receive the impossible. And we're using Mark chapter 10, verse 27. Uh, it says, And Jesus looking upon them saith, With men it is impossible, but not with God, for with God all things are possible. Now, Brother Copeland, in this passage of Scripture, he's first talking to the rich, rich man. He tells people how, how, to under, how this can be. The disciples can't understand. And if you go past verse 27, then he starts talking about the hundredfold. So in this passage, he's dealing with unbelievable and impossible things. Yeah. He's linking them together. What I want to talk about today is a word that everybody's experienced. It's called appetite. Appetite. And if you take a note, write this down. Every satisfaction creates an appetite for more. That's right. You see, people say, why do y'all talk about the Word of God all the time? Appetite. And from our appetite, of wanting to know God and for God to know us, we receive a hunger. We hunger and thirst after righteousness, you see. So uh, I, people say, I don't see how y'all can talk about God. I mean, I had one man say, I mean, I got a hard time going to church once a week, you know. I'm struggling with it. I said, because you have no appetite. When you have no appetite, you do not eat. You don't want nothing. It's good to taste and see that the, oh, the Lord is good. Yes, indeed. So what we're saying today is God has not only given us a hunger and a thirst for righteousness, but he's given us an appetite to believe the unbelievable and receive the impossible. Yes. I've had people come, and in fact, it, I've had people, it, it, not too long ago, someone said, uh, they're going to be in any miracles at that believer's convention? They're going to be, and watch this. You see, and, I, and, I, and the Lord said, appetite. They're already expecting something. So something has to pr be produced. Well, yes. Why? Because you see, wherever God is, there's a miracle in operation. You know, people ask me all the time, how come you can get someone to just come out of them pews so easy or out of those chairs uh, to, uh, to get saved so easily? And, you know, I said, I'll tell you what it is. I create appetite. Appetite, see, which creates hunger and thirst to come and receive this glorious gift which is Jesus Christ. So when you understand what I'm saying, when if, you, if you're looking at that unbelievable, impossible thing, I just don't know how I, I can do that or receive that. It's because what you need to work on is your appetite. And your appetite comes from the Word of God. The closer you get to God, the more you want of Him. The more. The more you, you, you desire. I mean, I have come out of a church, out of a service, soaking wet from preaching, teaching. Now, I mean dog tired, like they say, you know. And watch this, and go to my room and <laughs> lay down on the bed and pick up my Bible. Oh yeah! And, you see, and people would say, "No, oh, you just did—you just did two hours or whatever." Yeah, but but see, 
it's the appetite of knowing what is in here that creates the hunger and the thirst, not only for righteousness, but for wisdom. You know, I believe Brother Creflo Dollar is one of his foundational scriptures of his ministry is wisdom is the principal thing. You get wisdom, you get understanding. You see, and what people don't seem to understand is this, this appetite is never satisfied and it will never be. I can't wait till I get to heaven. And you know, and if you think we're going to quit studying the word of God when we get to heaven, we got, I mean, unbelievable, but it's, unimaginable time in terms of years that God, Jesus is going to sit down and say, I think I'm going to have a Bible study oh. at Jesse's house. <laughs> Come on, think about that. And the house is big enough to fit anybody who wants to get in there. Because I mean, one thing about the Lord, he said, I'll give you the desires of your heart. Now, you know, some people say, I don't believe that. I said, what well, I do, you know, I tell people, I don't talk about it much. I just tell people that Jesus is coming. But I did go to heaven. I've been in that lineage of people that's been taken out. Why me? Well, I don't know why me, but I'm just saying he, he's no respect to person. But I realized I literally sat on a windowsill with the apostle Paul. Good. And fascinated me. And he said this, these exact words, you, you don't have to believe this. It's still true. Anyhow, he said, what are they saying about my gospel? He still calls it his gospel. And I told him this. I said, I'll tell you, I preach everything you say. I said, I want that. And then he said, would you correct something for me? Now, people, whether you believe it or not, this is just simple, the truth. This is unbelievably impossible, but it happened. It's doable. He said, you know, in my scripture, when I was writing to the church, he said, our light affliction is but for a moment. He said, have you read that? I said, yes, sir. And I said, in fact, I preached on that. He said, the church has turned it into a lifetime. And then he leaned over and put his hand on my hand like that. He said, change it back to a moment. So when I left there, I had a directive from the apostle Paul to change it back to a moment because let me tell you something. In a moment of time, you finish with the devil. You see, oh, yeah. unbelievable, but yeah. it's gone. You see, he said, our light affliction. You know, I got to thinking, he said he was beat five times with rods. He left for dead, stone. He called it light affliction. We wouldn't call that that today. We think that's just heavy persecution. But when you are at the point of believing the unbelievable and receiving the impossible, anything Satan can come up with in your mind is just light affliction. It doesn't hold a Nothing. light yes. to it, the glory to of the, this God. Yes. Yeah. Oh, my, my. Yeah. And, and that a directive. And then when the Lord sent me back, he, he Watch this. I thought I'd gonna get some major revelation. You know what I'm saying? You know, you, he said, "Go tell my people I'm coming." And you know, in my mind, you know, one thing you don't do is think in front of God because He hear your thoughts. Mm -hmm. I thought to myself, Man, "They already know that." And He looked at me and got firm. He said, "No, they don't. You go tell them." And how many people today, right now, that's watching this telegraph, don't even think about the coming of the Lord? It's not even on their mind. I'm talking about Christian people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because you see the appetite. It's not they're looking. They'll talk about it if you bring it up. Yes. Otherwise, they ain't going to think about it all day. When I married Kathy, the day before, I had an appetite. I was like, bless God, I can't, God, I want that woman, man. I, 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 you know, I said, my God, I got 10 more hours. Bless God, I, 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 I was waiting to, to meet my bride. You see what I'm saying? Anticipation. Yes, anticipation. And out of anticipation, expectation that we would start our life together. Well, ladies and gentlemen, listen to me. God is right now creating a greater appetite in you for you to receive, to believe the unbelievable and receive the impossible, to literally grasp it and then let your hunger and thirst and sit. You know, Jesus talks about food quite a bit. He says, let's have this supper. This message. Why? Because, you know, when you're at supper or when you're at dinner, you know, it, it's a pleasure. You're in fellowship if you're eating with people. You, you're taking care of the sustenance that, that your body needs and all this kind of stuff. It's an appetite to know more. Brother Copeland, I, I, my appetite is growing so much mm -hmm. that even when I, I sleep, I wake, I woke up last night and said, now listen, when, when I, I grab me a little like a recorded thing, say, I, I got to deal with this after I wake up. It's so much that it even goes to bed with me. It's mm -hmm. in my thought processes mm -hmm. while I'm sleeping. It should be. And it should be. And uh, people say, well, it's that joy you got. No, 
No, no, no. That joy was just, it, it, that, that's, that, that's that gift given to me. That's the fruit of the Spirit, Joe. It's to know Him, to know Him, not to just believe in Him. I'm not just looking to believe in God. I want to know Him. Jesus said, He that hungers and thirsts for righteousness shall be filled. Yeah. Too much of the time I was, God, I am so hungry. <laughs> and and the Lord corrected me one day. He said, get over on the faith side on that. He said, you keep talking about the hunger and I'm talking about you being filled. I like that. Now he said, Kenneth, you start believing for the filling, saying, thank God I am full Amen. of your righteousness and your word. And, and then I noticed that stirred me up. I was hungrier than I had been before, but I started being satisfied. Yes, indeed. Because stuff started coming. Revelation yeah. started coming. And you get over on the faith side of Ooh, it. Oh, that's good. Instead of hanging out on how much I need him, start majoring on how much I've got him. Yeah. Oh, that's good. It it's, makes a difference. It's it like changes a, it's things. It's like a cow chewing the cud. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you swallow it, come back, you chew it again, you know what I'm saying? Until you get to such a fullness of this. Ladies and gentlemen, today is a miracle day for you. Mark my words, what you're hearing today is setting something up right now for you to receive what God has for you. You certainly deserve it. You've certainly waited long enough. Now, it's your responsibility to receive it, and that's why you're watching this telecast, so you can learn to receive. That's what you teach your partners, and I'm one of them. Right. I ain't never yeah. got around you, Brother Covid or Gloria, that I didn't receive something from God. Pray, God. That's the truth. And we're out of time. And we're out of time. <laughs> Brother Jesse and I'll be back in just a moment. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all you're getting, get understanding. Proverbs 4, 7 through 9. If you really want to get the wisdom of God, you'll have to do more than casually read the scriptures a few minutes a day. You'll have to feed on them day and night. You'll have to get rid of the rubbish you've been feeding into your consciousness by reprogramming your mind with the Word of God. Do whatever it takes to saturate yourself with the Word of God. Come to a Kenneth Copeland Ministries event. The Great Lakes Victory Campaign, August 15th through 17th with Kenneth and Gloria Copeland at the U.S. Cellular Arena in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. The 2013 Venezuela Victory Campaign. Kenneth Copeland will be in Maracaibo, Venezuela, August 30th through 31st. Living Victory East Coast Faith Encounter, Atlanta, Georgia, September 13th through 14th with Kenneth Copeland and Dr. Stephen and Kelly Swisher. Real, that which actually exists, occurs in fact and is not imagined. True, pure, raw, and powerful is God's word and authority. Break out of the mediocre and live your life in God's authority and power. Find strength, wisdom, healing, and success in the words of the most powerful book on the planet, the Bible. The Real Authority Package takes you to new levels of God-centered living. Kenneth Copeland's two CD series, God's Word, Final Authority, helps ground you in the roots of faith. Make sure everything you think, say, and do is based on the truth in God's Word. Jesse Duplantis' book, Distortion, The Vanity of Genetically Altered Christianity, separates the real from the powerless. Don't let everything you see overwhelm you. Overwhelm it with the Word of God and faith. Open your heart and cultivate fearless faith. Honor His Word and make it final authority every day. Discover the difference between real Christianity and genetically altered Christianity. Order the Real Authority Package today for $19.99 and enjoy a savings of 20%. Log on to kcm.org slash TV special or call 1-800-600-7395. Find your strength in the Word of God and take authority in every challenge. For an additional 10% off, order your package online. For this and other products by Kenneth Copeland Ministries, go to kcm.org. The new book by Jesse, Distortion, The Vanity of Genetically Altered Christianity. Yes, sir. And you got that little 
that little franken <laughs> pair <Franken-pair. laughs> on the front of it there. It's, it's a, a pair that's all riveted together. And <laughs> it's alive! It's, it's alive! alive. <laughs> <laughs> but you can't eat it. <laughs> right. That's right. You can't eat it. <laughs> and then two CDs that I preached here uh, some time ago on God's Word, Final Authority. And here's the thing about these things. When you get hold of God's final authority in your life, it settles things for you. Yes, indeed. You walk in stability. You walk when other people are coming apart at the seams. I mean, they're, they're, the economy's gone haywire down the tubes. They don't know what to do. They're gonna, and you're just steady and continuing to grow and grow and grow. And God prospers you through the middle of all that so you can prosper others. That's right. And you stand firm on the truth of God's Amen. words. You say in this instead of what they're saying. That's it. And you will not allow the devil to distort the word. You're standing on the promises of God and expecting every petition to come to pass. Amen. So you need to put your trust in him and believe God. And that's the way you do it. And you need to get these and spend quality time studying them. Amen. Amen. Now then, Father, we just pray for this radio and television audience all over the world. Yes, Lord. And we thank you for them. I'm asking for strength to flow into them today. Yes, Lord. Beyond anything that they've ever known. Reveal yourself to them, Lord Jesus. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. If you need prayer, we have a 24-hour prayer line that prayer is the foundation of this ministry. Yes, it, it, it's first place and priority in this ministry when it comes to ministering to people. The, the team of prayer ministers here are on staff. They are here. They are trained. They That's are God. prayer people. They're not they're just, you know, I know what you're hired saying. help or right. that kind of thing. So take advantage of that. Now, if you live outside the United States, go, go to kcm.org and, and check out our offices in other That's nations. Right and find out the, the, the prayer numbers and prayer times and so forth because we have prayer staff in every one of these places and we're there for you. Yes, Praise indeed. God. This, this is important, Jesse. Very important. It, it's a, it is a prayer network of people. There are hundreds of thousands of us. We are headed towards one million Hallelujah. I believe it for the end of this year. Amen. See you tomorrow. Jesus is is Lord. Kenneth Copeland Ministries is here for you. The Believer's Voice of Victory is available on DVD or CD at kcm.org. You can also view the webcasts online at your convenience or download them as video or audio files. Continue to grow in God's Word and build your faith with this week's product offer. These Word-based teachings will help you live in victory. Order your copy today. Receive the great grace God is abounding toward you and live in the blessing.